Yes, people, what's happening? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another edition of the Opposition Preview. And on Sunday, Chelsea host Sheffield United uh, looking for a really important win. The Blues actually sitting in 12th uh, at the moment, mid-table side, taking on bottom of the table Sheffield United. But they have won their most recent game, Chris Wilder's first win since returning a 1-0 win against Brentford. It's going to be a tough game for Chelsea. Normally the sort of sides that we struggle against, particularly at home, low block, tough to break down potentially. So it's not going to be as easy a game as uh, people might think it's going to be. But to talk all things Sheffield United, look ahead to the game itself. I'm delighted to be joined by Nick from the Chef United. Wait, mate, thank you for coming on. Really appreciate it. Um, I guess there's one place to start. Surprisingly, coming up to Christmas, there's only been one managerial sack in. It has been at Sheffield United. Paul Heckingbottom getting his marching orders. Chris Wilder returning. Um, do you think that was fair for, for Hacking Bottom? Do you think he had to go, particularly after the start of the season and that 5 0 hammering at Burnley? Was it kind of writing on the wall? Did the fans want him out? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Pretty much exactly how you said. Um, I wasn't too sure about Chris Wilder coming in, to be honest, at the time, but the closer and closer it got, the more excited I got because of how good we were under Chris Wilder not too long ago. But yeah, Hecky definitely needed to go. I think we gave him more time than usual because he got us promoted. And I think. Quite often, teams that get promoted want to give that manager a little bit more time. I think the London clubs seem to be the ones that press the panic button earlier than the, the Northern clubs sometimes. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we, we certainly needed to do it at that moment. And uh, I'm glad we did. And do you know what? If it had gone a little bit before, maybe it would give us a little bit more time to kind of get back going. But I do think we needed that Burnley game to just completely get rid because I think if we'd have lost 1-0 or 2-0 to Burnley, it might have still been in a in a job. Uh, but yeah, we needed that. We needed we needed him to go so that we could bring in just someone new with a few a few different ideas. And uh, Chris Wilder certainly is that man and he's got us just getting stuck in, um, getting his pressing teams, just getting his exerting a little bit more energy than Hecky was doing. I mean, do you think do you think the step up was too big for him ultimately for Heckin Bottom in terms of he had, he had a good season in the championship, you know, obviously going up automatically. Do you just think that, you know, the step up was too big for him to manage? Perhaps he's just not quite a good enough manager to be in the Premier League. I mean, what, what would you put it down to? Kind of because I'm not saying that people are expecting Sheffield United, you know, to have sort of an unbelievable start to the season. They'd expect you to be sort of in and around the bottom three at this point of the season, given the squad you've got. But why do you think he struggled to, to potentially get anything more out of this group of players? Um, I, I always thought that Heck is quite, quite good at motivating the, the lads until this season. Um, there was always a question mark over him because he had a really good start to his managerial career. I don't think there was anyone before Barnsley. I might be, I might be wrong there. He had a really good time at Barnsley. Had a really bad time at Leeds, then at Hibs. And then I think he thought his managerial career was over, especially for the um uh, for the in the professional game. Uh, he was actually our uh, under 20, I can't remember if it was under 21s or under 23s at the time. Um, but he just got given that chance and he took it with both hands. So fair play to him. Um when we're in the Premier League under Chris Wilder and, and that COVID season where we we didn't win for I think it was the 17th game when we won finally. Um, Hecky took over when we were at our lowest at that point because the fans were obviously really, really low because we weren't allowed in the ground. We couldn't cheer our team on. I think it would have been a lot different uh, that season if fans were allowed in the ground. Uh, but at the same time, Hecky took his chance. He did really well for us, didn't get the job, but then stepped back in, did a fantastic job picking us up off our knees because we had Slavisa Ikanovic, who has got the CV for it, but... It, it wasn't. He, he couldn't get the players playing how he wanted them to because they didn't play in his in his way in his in his style. Um, heck, he did it. He came in and, and said, "You know what? I'm going to go back to basics," and that's exactly what he did. He got a really really good bunch of players playing well again. And we had Morgan Gibbs White on loan the first season under Hecky, which obviously he's a very good player. Um, Illiman and Dyer coming through the youth team. Hecky brought him through the youth team with a few others as well. Did really, really well in, in that regard. Um, I think the worry was always the fact that he's he failed at Leeds. Um, he failed at the job after. So he's only really had one really, really good job. That was at Barnsley. I don't remember if they were in League One or the Championship. But going up to the Premier League, the big leagues, especially when we lost Illimin and Dai to, uh, to Marseille, we sold Sander Berger really late on, which 
I was never really a massive Sanderberger fan, so I wasn't that bothered because we brought Gus Harmer in very, very quickly, and people that know Gus Harmer know that he's a very, very good player. So I saw that as a step up. Um, a lot a lot of lazy critics say we sold our best two players, but it wasn't that. Illumin and I was by far our best player. Sander, not so much. Um, but I think just selling the players so late on just got Hecky off on the wrong foot straight away. And I think if we'd have kept Il- kept Illumin, if we'd have maybe invested a little bit more um, in the playing squad, I think that Hecky would have done a better job. A lot of Blades fans think that he was kind of started off the season with his arms tied behind his back. So it's not all Hecky's fault, this. But at the same time, Chris Wilder's come in and shown, yes, we don't have the greatest squad in the Premier League, but we can get a lot more out of them than what Hecky did. So, uh, yeah, I feel sorry for Hecky. But at the same time, like you said earlier, I don't think that he was he's cut out for, for that level. Yeah, no, I, think, I think that's fair enough. I mean, obviously, you touched on a couple of players there. Um he spent a reasonable amount of money in the window. Uh, two, two of the main signings, obviously, Gus Hamer from, from Coventry had an exceptional season in the championship last year. I think he scored in the playoff final as well, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and he obviously bought in uh, Cameron Archer as well from Aston Villa, the centre forward. Uh, those two particularly, uh, what have you made of them? Have they made the impact that you expected them to do? Have you wanted to see more from them? How, how have they settled in? Cameron Archer made a fantastic start. Scored well. I always try. I always say scoring two goals against Everton, but one came off the post and hit Pickford on the back of the head and went in. But I'll I'll credit credit it to him. Uh, he also scored a fantastic goal against Wolves. But in between that, he's been a bit patchy. Um, under Chris Wilder, since well, since Chris Wilder's come in, he's looked very exciting again, like the play that we thought we signed because uh, in the Championship last season when we were going great guns, Middlesbrough came to Bramall Lane and Cameron Archer absolutely tore us apart. And we're still kind of waiting to see that side of Cameron Archer. I think he's lost a little, lost a little bit of confidence. But hopefully Chris will be uh, giving him that confidence back. Um, so, yeah, I was always excited to see Cameron Archer. I think anyone in the bottom half of the Premier League would probably like to see Cameron Archer play for them. He was a bit more of a marquee signing for us, whereas he probably wasn't, wouldn't be for other teams. Um, and he's had to be. He's had to come in. He's had to hit the ground running and... He hasn't necessarily done that, but I'm 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 very excited to see what he's got to offer for the rest of the season. Uh Gus Harmer, I, I'm a big fan, was a big, big fan of him last season as well. I think he could push to get into a lot of clubs in the Premier League as well. Uh he's not particularly had a great start at Bramall Lane for me, but that's only because I, I hold him at such high regard because I think he's such a great player. Uh he started off exceptionally well, just like Cameron Archer. Uh, scoring a goal from outside the box against uh, Forest, which was a fantastic finish. Uh, he's, he's dead balls into the box are sublime as well. Um, but he, I think he just lost a little bit of that bite in the midfield, and, and that's what he was known for at Coventry, getting stuck in, uh, starting off attacks, and obviously finishing them as well. Like you say, he scored in the uh, in the playoff final. He also scored in the playoff semi final against Borough as well, um, which was uh, I don't think anyone expected to see Coventry in the final. So. Um, yeah, he certainly got them there. And um, like I say, I expected to see more from him this season. I think he's coming into his own just as Cameron Archer is. So, uh, yeah, yeah, very excited times to uh, to be a blade, even though we are bottom of the league. I mean, looking ahead to the game on Saturday, uh, your two wins this season have both come up Bramall Lane. Obviously, home form is going to be very important in the, in the bid to stay up. But any sort of points you can get on the road are going to be a huge bonus. Um, as a Chelsea fan, you know what what can what can I expect from Sheffield United? I'll be honest, I've not watched very much of Sheffield United this season. What sort of style of play can we expect uh, on Saturday? And and how do you how is Chris Wilder likely to set the team up uh, for the game at Stamford Bridge? I think before Chris came in, you'd have seen us sat really really deep and getting absolutely nowhere near your goal. Uh, Everything we Chris hate, has, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but since Chris has come in, um, we've. I wouldn't say we're completely the opposite. Um, we're going to be defensive, I'm sure of it. Uh, but at the same time, we'll have a little bit of purpose about our play. Um, we'll be much. We'll, we'll be on you. We'll be pressing, pressing, pressing all game. I'm sure of it. Chris won't let him uh, be any other way. Uh, but we will get balls into the box. I'm sure of it. 
Uh, Ollie McBurney's back, which is a big, big relief to us. He's, he's been sent off twice this season, which is a, a one-match ban and then a, a two-match ban for, for having a second red card. And he's also been injured for a lot of the season as well. So he's not played too many games. But when he has been playing, he's been linking up the play really well, holding off defenders, bringing Cameron Archer into the game. And I think that's one of the reasons why Cameron Archer's not being as good uh, in the games without Ollie McBurney. So expect to th- see those two up front together. Uh, maybe one of them dropping a little bit deeper um, because obviously we're, we're playing Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. I know you guys aren't going great at the moment, but um, it's obviously we're still going to be the underdogs by a, by a long chalk. So um, I think we're going to sit in as much as we can and defend. Um, I want to say hi, but I can't see that, to be fair. I think we'll defend from the front, but we're going to be sitting back. We're going to be trying to catch you on the break and we're going to try and um, get some high balls into the box and, and and score a goal that sort of way. I mean, yeah, that, for me, that's where going to be your 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 sort of your your best chance of scoring. We're not defending set pieces or balls into the box very well at the moment. We're letting in a lot of goals from crosses and set plays. So, I mean, if Sheffield United can get some decent balls into the box and good set piece delivery, you know, you you are going to have half a chance at scoring. And you know, we struggle at home. We're struggling in general anyway. Uh, we particularly struggle to break sides down that you know, don't come out and play an awful lot. They'll come out and have a go, but predominantly they'll they're more than they're gonna sit back more than they're gonna they're gonna attack. We struggle when to break sides down at that, particularly at Stamford Bridge. Like the longer it goes on and we haven't scored or the game's level, like I think that will play into your hands a bit more. The unrest in the amongst the fans will start to grow. The, particularly this this is must win for us. I know for, for you guys obviously you need the points at the bottom, but you're probably looking at Chelsea away despite us being mid table and thinking, well this is not going to be whether the, the point or not here is not going to be determined whether we stay up or not, but anything we get is kind of going to be a bonus. But it, it feels weird as a Chelsea fan sitting in a position where a kind of worry, sort of concern that we might not beat Sheffield United at Stamford Bridge. It's kind of, it's kind of, I suppose it's sort of where we are in the times at the moment, but would you say that Sheffield United's main strengths and, you know, putting balls into the box and things like that, or is that a little bit of a disservice? Can you get it down on the deck and play a little bit as well? Yeah, we can definitely play. Um, I think under Chris Wilder before, it's, it's hard to judge really because Chris has only had two games as the manager against Liverpool at home, which was always like like this one really, was always going to be a bit of a, I don't like to use the word free hit, uh, especially under Chris Wilder. Like I expect us now, under Heke, I expect us to lose most games, especially going away to a, a big club like Chelsea or, or uh, Arsenal or teams like that that we've, we're playing or played away. I expect to, to lose under Paul Heckingbottom, but Chris Wilder, I never expected to go anywhere and us not put a fight up. And and I don't think I've ever seen us lose anything. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put <laughs> gonna put massive jinx on here, but I don't think I've ever seen us lose more than two nil away from home under Chris Wilder. Maybe three. We'll we'll say three, but uh, yeah, we, we certainly don't get hammered under Chris Wilder. So. Um, I expect us to, to move the ball quick, which has always been Chris Wilder's way. Pass and move, pass and move. Um, but yeah, like I say, I think that you've got such great talent. And again, I know you're not playing well at the moment, but you've got some very, very exciting players that can hurt teams, uh, a lot of pace. So I'm expecting us to try and sit in, like I say, and, and and get balls into the box when we can. But we can play. We can definitely play. We can pass the ball around. Uh, we can break those lines, and um, like I say, we've got quite a little bit of pace in the team. Not a, not a whole lot of pace, but um, yeah, I, th- I think we can go to Chelsea and, and possibly score a goal without lumping balls into the box. Yeah, no, to be honest, I think if we concede, which is quite possible, we're letting in a lot of goals at the moment. Four against City, four against Newcastle, two against Brighton, two against Man United, two against Everton at the weekend just gone. We're shipping goals, so like I, th- I, I, I would be surprised. I'd be shocked if you didn't score. I, I'll be honest. And if you get the first goal, then it's going to be a pro- it will be a problem for us because we really struggle to break down low block sides. Christopher and Kunku might be fit for the for the for the bench. Uh, we've been saying that for the last few weeks, and it's not happened. But maybe Saturday could be the day. Uh, you touched on we have got obviously got a lot of talent. Uh, from from your perspective, what kind of players are you a little bit concerned about? You feel it could cause you a few problems on Saturday. Any, anyone that stands out in particular? Right, you're asking me a question here that I will I will caveat this with. I don't know about you guys, but when we're losing games or not playing well, I'm not watching much of the day. And yeah, a fair. lot this se- we've been bad a lot this season, and I just can't. 
I just can't watch any football when we're bad. So I've not watched a lot of Chelsea this season. Um, Mudrick, I'm, I'm a big fan of his, but, you know, he's, I don't know, he's flattered to deceive a little bit um, since, he, since he's joined Chelsea. I'm very, very surprised that Sterling hasn't had more of a game recently, been on the bench, because Sterling, for me, always comes up trumps uh, whenever I've I've been seeing him play. Um so yeah, really, I've not got a lot to go on to be honest. Like I say, I've I've barely watched any football this season because I can't bring myself to to watch it. I really <laughs> Man, I can't. I know the feeling. Yeah, maybe maybe, yeah. maybe I can a little bit more now. Chris Wilder's the manager. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, we'll put a few more points on the board. Yeah, I mean, I think Cole Palmer is going to be key to what anything we do as well. He's had a he, great start to life at he Chelsea. He would have signed Cole Palmer as well if he didn't score those. Uh, I think it was two mm-hmm. goals for Man City. Uh, yeah. I've heard that we were on course to sign him on loan, but. It just happens like that because nobody was really talking about him. No, uh, Brighton were keen think... as well, I think. Say that again, sorry. Well, Brighton were keen on Cole Palmer as well. But then as soon as it was as soon as Pep come out after the Super Cup, I think he's basically yeah. like he's staying or he's being sold. The loan moves were were, to- were totally ruled out. He will be a he'll be a key player uh for us for sure. Midfield battle's gonna be key. Enzo and Caicedo, good players, but they've they've been overrun a lot recently. In the midfield, uh, I, I like James McAtee, the young lad on loan from Man City. I think he's, a, I think he's a very good player uh, f- for you guys. So it's going to be difficult. But lastly, but before I get score prediction, um, I know it sounds stupid. Obviously, the season expectation is just to stay up. Do you believe you can stay up? I mean, you're not a million miles off getting out of the drop zone. Um, you know, there's not that big a gap. Uh, Burnley and Luton. I know Luton have put in some decent performances in recent weeks, but I don't think there's an awful lot of difference between the three newly promoted sides. Do you believe, maybe with a few additions in January, obviously a bit of luck with injuries, etc. Do you believe that you guys can potentially get out and stay up? Um, It's a tough one. I want to be honest. I don't want to lie to you just because it's my team. <laughs> I think the best we're hoping for is, prob- not hoping for, the best I can expect is us to finish their bottom. I think we are better, or we can be better, than Burnley and Luton. I think Luton are very, very well drilled, and I think that's what they're going to hang their hat on this season, being very good defensively, being solid, and uh, having the big guys up front um, kick lumps out of uh, Premier League defenders. That's what I see Luton doing, and and that's fine. That's a a distinct style of play that they're going for, and, and fair play to them. I've just... Bournemouth came to Bramall Lane and absolutely tore us apart. Now, fair enough. I wasn't expecting that, and and they've they've done really well in in the recent weeks. Um, Bournemouth are one of those teams I expect to be down there with us, but they were miles better than us. Uh, Forest aren't doing great this season, but I think they've got better players than us. So I can't see another. I can't see which team we drag into that bottom three for us to stay up. Um, I think that we will fit a lot. Of, a lot of. Um, Journal- journalists were saying that we're going to finish with less points than Derby. Yeah, worst think team, yeah. It's it's every time a team starts poorly. Um, and, and no one's going to break that Derby record for a very, very, very long time. Um, but, yeah, we're definitely going to finish on a lot more points than I expected us to. I just can't see us. I can't see where we, who we bring down with us. No, I think I think that's a, I think that's a fair thing. So I, I I would probably agree. I mean, I, I I potentially might have said Everton, but they they they're now they're building up ahead of steam, playing some good stuff. I was at Goodison at the weekend, and you know they they look like a massively changed side uh, from from the start from the start of the season they had. I mean, I think you you boys should have beaten them when you drew two all earlier in the season. I thought you know Everton were poor. Um, yeah, I mean, I would have said Wolves as well, but Gary O'Neill is is doing a half decent job there. So, like, even if you are potentially good enough, like, uh, I I don't see who you potentially replace, as you said. But you never know; it's a long season. You just don't know what's going to happen. You know, it, it can't be ruled out. No, I, I think the other thing is as well. Uh, a lot of fans are saying, or fans of other teams are saying, are these the three worst teams to ever come up? And I don't. Th- it's definitely not that. I think it's just that, like last season, for instance. Leeds were shocking, Leicester were shocking. There was a lot of teams that were really bad last season, and that's the reason why. I'm I'm not saying that Fulham wouldn't have stayed up last season if it weren't for shocking teams. Fulham were really good last season, but I think Forest would have gone down, and yeah. I think Bournemouth would have probably have gone down if Leeds and, and, and Southampton, all these, these teams that have been in the Premier League for, for quite a while. I know Leeds haven't been, they've been in for two or three seasons, I can't remember, but there was three teams that were terrible last season, um, that were 
Premier League sides for for a few years, so they should have been a lot better. So I think I think Forest and, and Bournemouth did okay, but there's no way they'd have stayed up if it wasn't for how bad the other teams were. So oh, yeah, I, th- I think this season we've been a little bit unlucky that the likes of Everton, like you say, have picked up really really well. Bournemouth on their day look absolutely scintillating. Yeah. Some of the players that they've got, I think there's a lot of good teams in this this league this season. And the first season we got promoted under Chris Wilder. Um, it was a poor year for the Premier League for me. And we finished, I think it was ninth in the end. We were flirting with the Champions League at one point. Yeah, you were, yeah. a weird thing to say. Uh, but um, I think there were a lot of poor teams in that. And, and, and the Premier League's got so much better since the last time we were here. No, it absolutely has. I think it's the most competitive for me it, it's ever been. But to round out, mate, score prediction. Uh, you feel, feeling confident for Saturday? Yeah, a lot more confident, as you probably expect from what I've been saying earlier on. Um I think Head is telling me that we'll probably get beat by a narrow scoreline, maybe. As you've just said, we, we're probably going to score. So I'll go 2 1 Head. But Hart is thinking we can get something from this game, whether that's a point or nick a win. I, obviously, I've just given you three score predictions that are all <laughs> different. But um, I, I'm all right. I'll throw it out there. I say that we'll draw this one all. Fair. Well, to be honest, mate, I, I, I can't fully disagree with that. But we simply have to win this game. No, no, no more excuses now. Um, so for me, maybe I'm going to go just, we're going to just win 2-1, but it's going to be nervy. It's going to be closer than people think. And I wouldn't be surprised if we went a goal down either. But I'm going to go just tip us for a narrow 2-1 win. But mate, thanks so much for your time. If people want to check out more of what you guys do, where should they go? Uh, yeah, it's a YouTube channel and podcast called Chef United Way. Uh, all you need to do is type in Chef United Way on any social media platform and you'll find us. Guys, make sure you head over there, check all that stuff out, show the guys some love, go and subscribe. It'll be tagged in the title, links in the description for other social media channels. So make sure you go and show them some love. Guys, I'll be back again with another video soon. Take care and up the chills.